Does everybody recognize what we have? Okay. First one is number 41. What do you got? Hyperbola. Why is it a hyperbola? Okay, we got a hyperbola because of the minus. So we've got that there. It's a minus that's inside there that gives it away. Okay, and 42 is an ellipse. Excellent. Ellipse. So what we want to do then is uh, we want to graph these. And I'm going to graph them using the basic instructions that I've already given for ellipse and hyperbola. But I'm going to add in the translations. As I've said before, my favorite question in mathematics is what made zero? So what that does, it tells me when I'm dividing by zero. Very helpful. Domain issues. Okay. Uh, it tells me uh, also horizontal translations. And in this case, with the Y as well, right here, the Y as well will tell me the vertical translation. Vertical translation. So the first thing I'm going to do is find center. What makes zero here? What makes zero in X minus two? And what makes zero in Y minus three? So that is an answer of two in the X and three in the Y, both positive. So the center is right there at the coordinate two comma three. Okay, the box. I like to make a box with the hyperbola. That way it's easy to find the corners. As we said before, you don't have to make the box if you can see the corners. But the corners are what I need to do the asymptote for the hyperbola. So underneath the x is the horizontal displacement. You have to square root that number. So the horizontal displacement, or as we said before, maybe an x radius. Now, not coming off 0, 0 like we did before, we're going to come off 3, or excuse me, 2 comma 3. So from there, if I go 6 out, 6 out, okay, that is going to take me all the way out to 8. If I go 6 left, if I go 6 left, that's going to take me out to negative 4. If I use the part right here, the Y displacement comes from the 25 underneath the Y term. Makes it nice that way. So from the height of 3, I'm going to go 5 up. So I'm just going to call it right about there, and that's going to be then 8 for 5 up. 5 down takes me down a couple below. Okay, so I'm going to say right about here to negative 2. So there is the Four, excuse me, the four, uh, the four quarters um, that we use for drawing the circle, drawing the ellipse. By the way, if this was an ellipse, I'm pretty much done because the four red dots, the dot here, the dot here, and the dot here. Whoops, it's a little lower, but yeah, right there, and this one right there. These are all the four dots that would make the ellipse. But in this case, I'm going to use those to make the Hy uh, hyperbola's asymptotes. So if you could visualize the corner, the corner of the box would be right about there. So that's what I would do. I'd actually draw in a box. Or as I said before, if you can visualize it, that'll work fine too. So there is the box. I can now sketch in the asymptotes. So the asymptotes. Okay, have to hit the center and go right through the diagonal of that box. I'm going to again use the asymptotes here. Hopefully I hit the center and the diagonal and run it out that way. So now I have what we call the scaffolding for the hyperbola. My favorite question in this one is to just ask what is positive? Is the x squared positive or the y squared positive? Because I'm going to run that direction. All right, so which way are we running? Left, right, up, down? Left, right. Be careful. Use these points right here for your vertices. And the blue is actually the curve that we're trying to do here. The only difference from last night's homework is the fact that we've got to shift our box or our center up and around. Notice my uh, curve approaches the asymptote. Approaches the asymptotes. Okay? Remember, the blue is also the only part of the curve. Everything else is just extra, as I said, scaffolding for it. Um, to do the other one, the ellipse, same idea. Let's get an x, y break real quick. Just going to make one. Um, I'm going to shift it. What makes zero and what makes zero? So this guy is going out three and up four, about there. 
Okay, and the displacement's on this ellipse. What's the displacement's on the ellipse? X direction. Two. two. So I'm going to go two, and this is where you got to really be careful, because when I look over your shoulder and your ellipse either crosses or doesn't cross the axes, and it should or shouldn't, be careful there. In this case, it'll come up real close to it, because two left will not take it all the way across the axis. But that's something I look for. Two right. Okay, there's the left-right points. It's not a very good point, but you get the idea. And the displacement in the Y, I think you guys got this down. I'm not going to bore you with asking that question. Just going to run that three, square root of the nine. Three up, so about three up. Two, three, going a little bit higher there. And three down. Again, you're going to be just shy of the axes. And throw in the curve. So it really doesn't matter how bad your ellipse drawing is. You can tell by mine. Mine's not exactly perfect. A little bit egg-like. Okay, it's really I'm looking at those points and whether you're hitting them well. This isn't an art class, so I'm not going to critique your actual drawing of that. So that's how you do translations with conic sections.